from, I guess, even from the business perspective, what do you, what would your advice be even to someone like myself to starting out or anyone in the room in, in the sense of like what can, what more can we do? Do you know what well, First you... of all, I really tell people look after your family first. Yeah. Because you will never be satisfied and you'll have regrets. And the most important thing you've been given, the most precious thing you've ever been like is your family. Yeah. Then your profession. You know what? I'd like to speak to you 12 when I have speech nights and I say, you know, and everyone's they're thinking they've had this wonderful life in primary school and secondary school they have and now they're out to go to uni and it's all about having a house and a car and, a, and all the dreams of travel. And I sometimes think, God, mums and dads, we didn't spend our whole lives just to give you all these material things. Because sometimes we're focused sometimes the wrong way. So I'm saying it's not about the nurses and the teachers and the lawyers and the doctors. Sometimes there's this cliche of people they always think are the ones that can give back. And all the other people look up to them. A lot of nonsense. I'm a great believer that every single one of you, like last week I spoke with a group of students, I said, all of you here, I said, can all give back. And all of us must give back. I said, give back to your local community. You don't have to go to Africa. Mm. You don't have to go to China. You don't have to go help in there. You can also give back here. All your professions, you can still give back. Every single one has something to offer. People need gardens done. My house was built by tradesmen. Mm. A man who does it to TV areas, he gave the day. Also, give an opportunity for people to serve. So, whether it's very special kids, whether it's something in children's hospital, whether it's our neighbour. It doesn't have to be some big label of organisation. Mm -hmm. It's not always about giving money. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, you, uh, you get as much when you give and you give back. You've heard that old cliche, but it's very, very true. It makes you whole. It's also a wonderful example for your children. But I'm a great believer in, you know, take your kids along and get them exposed to that. Rather than giving the effort to expose they don't appreciate things, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's showing them through, through service, you know. So everyone, every profession can give back somehow. And not necessarily always that money, you know. And you know, tag your kid along with your fruit day. Yeah. Tag them along because there's, there's wonderful examples and I think it really builds values of character when you take young people and they look at that and you never know what that seed is. My seed, my first seed that happened for me was I was an altar girl in Carlton, probably the first altar girl in Australia. Mm -hmm. And every time the bishop came, they'd hide me so they wouldn't know I was an early altar. <laughs> <laughs> but, because, um, but because you're an altar girl, you get to um, go to altar boys' picnics which is very uncool for my brothers because most of the old the park all those days were boys and there's no girls and of course it was a bit uncool because my brother wasn't chosen the old boys so it was very uncool but yeah. I was the girl that coming along with my friends. But one day this priest showed us this film and it was a black and white film and it was a boy of colour and he was he was very burnt. And as a young person I'd never even heard of a child suffering or never heard of a child being burnt. I thought I was, just, I was mesmerised by this film and I can't even tell you much all I remember that moment. I can still picture that film I saw. And I remember all these people around this boy and they were living in a really poor place, which now I know is Papua New Guinea, and it's a village, and it's a great sense of community. And there were these people that came along and they were feeding them and laughing with them and giving them clothes and, and helping this little boy and giving him medicines. And I thought, wow, what is that? And I kept looking thinking, all of us were so taken by this boy who was burnt, and you can't help but be merciful. But what I was more taken by is, who were those people? Who were those people helping him? Mm. Who are those people making the people laugh? And who are those people giving them things? Wow, oh, what if I could give him something? Mm. As a young person, and all of us think that. We want to help. We yes. want to help people. We've, got, we've all got, we're instinctively like that. So what happened for me is whoever that was, it wasn't until years that I realised it was mothers, Teresa's brothers and sisters working there. And that was my seed. But we all have seeds, all of us here today. And mm. you're going to have moments you remember all. It could be a parent or a grandparent. It could be a child. But there's seeds that are planted and they're there for a reason. So you could be the seed for your offspring. So I'm a great believer in um, mm. young people don't think it's all about uni now and my life and what I'm going to get. Mm. Just realise you you're going to be a hairdresser. Mm. Often go to old people's home and come up, or pensions come up. There's things you can all do to give back to the community. So I have a really big thing on that sense of self, service by self. You know? mm. And putting it on the agenda. But yeah, making it, yeah, making not it even, or, yeah, not, not on the agenda, just making it terms, yeah, like yeah. putting it in perspective. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got to do that. Well, like, I'm only going to do that, but putting in the I mean, I think all people here are business people anyway, so if you want something done, you ask a busy person. I think we're all like that here. Yeah. Obviously, we're here for a reason. Yeah. So uh, it's also encouraging that with others, but also realising um, to instil that, you know, you can say, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. But maybe even do it, just say, just do it. I was telling my girls about what we're doing this morning, six and four, and they were so intrigued. Mama, can you tell me about the lady? And what she does again, and I started to say, in my four-year-old, we had a compilation of Michael Jackson videos, 
And they always, when Heal the World would come on, they would stop in their tracks, you know, because it would show all the kids in Africa and in Canada and all the kids. And then the four year old horses turned around and I said, Mama, she's like the woman that helps all the children in the Michael Jackson video. <laughs> <laughs> like she made that, that connection. Of, uh, it was very cute, but they were really, they, they, they were, were very curious. curious like, um, which, and yeah, that's um, very relevant to me with now saying, like making that. I guess it was an important conversation. I didn't even realise at the time of having that just that casual little chat that that's actually planting seeds, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. Even, um, yeah from, from very early. And Trishna and Krishna, you were mentioning before about them have been separated from their, their mother. So at the point when, like, how did that journey, where was the beginning of finding these conjoint? Beautiful girls. Well, we were told we were connected from somebody in Bangladesh. Yeah. Was actually, a young girl from New South Wales. She was on an ambassador program in um, in um, Bangladesh from Canberra. And she was on one year of youth exchange thing, and she'd been working on weekends as volunteers, but working with child trafficking during the week. And um, she wrote to Oprah Winfrey. She wrote to all these organisations, hoping someone would help. And then, lo and behold, she passed on to someone else in Bangladesh, who then passed on to us. And I remember getting the paperwork and um, winning up Tony Holmes. Tony's another one of my kids. He's a uh, plastic surgeon with children. And, and he was in theatre. And I said, oh, can you ask him? I still need to talk to him. Can you put him on speaker in there? And they said, um, will you tell him it's Moira? I've got a really interesting case for him. I said, trust me, he'll take the call. I said. <laughs> and so anyway, so he took the call at speaker. I said, Moira, I, I am scrubbed. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, now just, if you can stop for a second, you need to listen to this, Tony. I said, what's that? I said, well, he said, um, I said, um, uh, he was, I think he was just about to go in. I said, um, I, got a, I got some conjoined twins and they're, they're joined to the head. I think they call them craniopagus twins. Uh, it's hard to jump in on. I said, Did you hear that, Tony? There's no answer. I said, Tony, did you hear that? I said, Yes, more I heard that. I said, Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big one. I said, Well, you if you always say it's very interesting, I think it's going to be something very interesting. <laughs> you say that. I said, What do you think? Oh, I'm worried they'll kill us, you know, they'll kill us. I said, Yeah, no. I said, You just see what you can do. I said, I'll just drop in the seat now, Tony, and I'll get all the paperwork and you can let me know anything. I said, They'll kill us, you know, they'll kill us more. Like, I was working berserk if we even think of something like that. So anyway, it led to one thing that's another. We eventually brought them here for evaluation. And then, of course, when we got here, they were so sick. And, and certainly they weren't going to live much longer because one was more sick than the other. And uh, so then the journey began, which you saw, which was over 20 times in the theatre. And the last operation wasn't necessarily the biggest one, but it certainly made mm -hmm. the difference. Yeah. And here we are today with a little girl in grade two. And, yeah. and little Chrissy, and Chrissy's not a mainstream school yet but she's doing really well and um, she's walking with a walker and she's th she's a little bit they're both miracles but Chrissy's sort of one of those people who think defines the odds wow. and just to have their mother there and that's why I'll be honest if I can go the care with that's where I learned a lot from the girls as well little people are inspirational little people teach us a lot mm -hmm. you know I always have wisdom doesn't always come in students you know and um, little Chrissy because because she came for care you know I really thought I knew what it was to be a carer mm -hmm. I've been mean, kids for years, and I sat by their beds in the hospital, and never let them until they went home, and that's on the plane. I got it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I know. It. Sometimes you get too big for your boots, you know. And it wasn't until I had Chris and I realised, wow, she's got severe needs. She's the most amazing little person. I wouldn't change a thing in her, you know. Mm -hmm. And she's so perfect to me, you know, but um, and to the people around me. And um, there comes a day where you think, my God, you know, I need to get this because here I was in Melbourne. I moved down to Melbourne when the twins were joined. Mm -hmm. And um, cross cross over the children's hospital. Sometimes I'd roll there at one o'clock in the morning. I wouldn't call an ambulance or a car. I just put them in the parable and cross, you know, because yeah. one got sick, you know, the other will get sick. And, and I, some of my loneliest times in my life, believe it or not, are in Marion City. We're in Melbourne here, we are caring for those girls, and it was nights because you had to be awake all night because one of the girls had a trachea, so you had to, which is an airway tube. And I would look out there in the sky and I'd say, please God, please God, give me another night, please don't take me. Just don't take me, keep my life another night. And every night, you know, they don't make it. And then I'd say, God, please bring the sun up soon. This, this long, this night's just seems so long. And sometimes someone would come in and say, Oh, good morning, Moira. How are you? And I'd go, oh My God, they're asking how I am. I said, Well, I said, oh, I'm good, thank you, because it's usually always, How are the girls? Mm -hmm. What's been happening with them? How are you? What you been up to, Moira? I said, Well, I well, haven't been much because I don't go anywhere. I'm always with the girls. But I said, um, Oh, thank you for asking. I said, Moira, can I drop you a meal or something? I've been, and I said, kind of said, why would you drop me a meal? That was so kind. Why would you think of giving me a meal? Because even my whole life, 
was revolved around them and that you'd never even think of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly found I knew what was going on as a carer because these girls had injections at night, they had suction at night, they had blood pressure machines all night, they had feed machines all night. It was like an ICU in my bedroom. And, and I suddenly realised what the life was to be a carer. And because of that, I became so passionate realising, my God, you know, this happened to me for a reason. In my own city, it's been this hard. And I said, so I became an ambassador for Carers Victoria. And one of the things that really inspired me through this journey was two years ago in Whittlesey, I gave a talk at a local for about 300 people there, and it was a rotary function to encourage more people to join Rotary. Anyway, so I gave this story about the experience as a carer. And two weeks later, and this really resonates with me because it's another fellow Victorian, it's Australian, someone who looks like our neighbours. This woman bumped into this lady called Marilyn. Marilyn was a girl, a girlfriend of mine, and she's a granny, and she's um, organised my talks now. She said, um, you know Moira Kelly? I said, yeah. I said, I said, look, Marilyn, I know you're a little too lady. I live down the road here. I went to your talk last week, you know, you had for Rotary, and I said, oh, I haven't stopped thinking about the talk with Moira. I said, oh, is that right? I heard her photos and her presentation. I said, and I said, I, I went and acted on that, and I said, I've got something from it. So I really need you to tell Moira this. And I said, what was that? She said, well, I've been living in my street for like years and years. My kids are all grown up. Some are at uni, one's in year, like year 12. But in the daytime, I'm sort of free. But my neighbour, Bill and Lorna, they've been there for years and years. They've seen all my kids grow up. And you know, the last few years, Lorna hasn't been well. I know he's been caring for us. And I'll be honest, is that right? I said, yeah. You know, you never want to be a nuisance because you figure they're always busy. Yeah. And I have that, I have that mentality. I want to be a nuisance and they've got their hands full. Yeah. I said, and so I just thought the next day, I'm going to go in there. And I knocked on his door. And a couple of times finally he answered, and the first thing he said was, oh, what's wrong? Because he wouldn't think that someone's had a social visit, because carers don't get social visits. Okay, it's a what's on. I said, no, nothing's wrong. I said, oh, do you need something? I said, no, 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 I don't need anything, because he's always thinking, you must need something. I said, look, Bill, I, was, uh, I just want to let you know that my kids have all grown up here now, and all the kids are going well, but I've got free time. I'd like to come in here once a week. You get out and do something for yourself, and I'll mind order and just help you in the house. Once a week, I'd like to come in here to get out. And he says, he says you study. He said, what are you saying? And she repeated, and then this man, he was 75, his wife was 70, he started bursting out crying, mm -hmm. and he said it was the kindest thing anyone has said to him in, in, in over five years. Mm -hmm. And yet his own children come there every week, and they visit diligently, they have food, and they're terrific, but they don't see the world he's playing, and no yes. one is. And that, I don't know what it is, but it resonated me so well as a, as a Victorian, thinking this is one of our own people, and they're just asking for something simple. But, and it wasn't even the act of coming to give you a break, it was that someone noticed and someone cared about you. So I think as a community we have a lot to, it's not about a country thing, country people do that. Us city people have to remember that as well. How many of us know our neighbours? Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So that's where maybe we've got to come back to some basics and yeah. maybe bring the country back in the city. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions or anything to that? Anything like, please put it out there. Laura, how do you say yes all the time? I don't, and the very hard thing, I think you guys would know as well, because you're obviously in your own field as well, but you've got to learn to say no. Mm. It's not easy, but you've got to follow your gut. But if I knew it was a kid, and I think you'd be the same, if someone came to you with a child, there's no way you'd ever say no. So no is different than old people, you know? But there's, I think you'd follow your gut, but I just think it's a yes thing with the right yeses. And you know what, if they're wrong yeses, you're going to learn from it. But you know what, mm -hmm. I'd rather know I've done it than regret that I didn't do something, or oh God, what have I done that? Because you know, I think we're space as human, so. It doesn't make it perfect, and you might not do a great job, but at least you did your best, you know? You know? Sometimes I say, yes, you know it's going to cost thousands of dollars, you've got a cent. I've done that many times. That's why, yeah. <laughs> that's why people used to help me so the why? That's why people <laughs> on boards used to hate accountants. I said, well, I said, well, that's why you're an accountant. I'm not an accountant. And at the end of the day, money shouldn't dictate a child's life. Money shouldn't dictate anyone's life. So that's when economics shouldn't take over humanity. Mm. Just because I own a passport and you own a passport doesn't give us a right to hospitals in Australia. But if, if, if um, the person next door has a wrong passport, he can't have emotions. And my kids have come here, I can't go to a public hospital because they're not Australian. So I keep Patricia and Krishna, I pay for everything for them with are Australian citizens. So their schooling, everything. The Catholic Church helps me out their schooling, but everything, all her medicine, every time I go to the chemist, I'm like, oh, this is crazy, but I pay for this. I say, yeah, but one day I don't want to get a Medicare card. I'm just happy to arrive. So they still don't have no, no, a Medicare card? No, no. And Chrissy's on melatonin, which is a $100 bottle. Because um, she, little Chrissy suffers from, um, um, she can't sleep on her own. She's ever since she separated her sister. The other one's just flying. 
in fact she sleeps with me <laughs> during the last night so she's always slept with me or sister Fran if I'm not there sister Fran she's used to the two other sister Frans like Joseph but she's called Granny Nana I've become a mother she's become a Granny with them in her hands and we're not else <laughs> but anyway so sister Fran she has another time at night time to help her sleep because she suffers from post traumatic stress she has arrived with a lot of needs but she's the thing she remembers everything that happened in theatre she can't walk into a hospital she goes to Lucy the above above and so you have to sort of change the things around. Like she can't even get an injection that knocked them out first. So she wow. sometimes tells her. Nine times she wakes up when the body's not next to her, she'll go into a panic. So um, we give her melatonin. But I swear I'm an pre sized bed, but I've been sleeping this much. And I put a pillow, so I said, Trish, I'm really in sleep. So I could be so sleepy that side of the But of course, the leg is actually touching. The leg and the hand have to touch the body. The hand is always here. And the leg is always there. She's got to feel the body. She's got to, yeah. It's, it's the most bizarre thing. So you get used to I think any mum who's at yeah. they know the life of maybe some dad. Sorry, but she'd be so impartial. But mum's going to know that's life, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know what? I couldn't sleep without her now. I'll be honest. I actually wouldn't be able to. That's, that's, that's Chrissy. So, and she has a You'll have your own um, it's like that uh, detachment. You know, the babies. Maybe I'll listen to the whole Have you got any animals in the house? I do. I just recently got a, because she's terrified of animals, but I got uh, a golden retriever. It's okay. And um, we got it from, from, um, from Sydney, actually, because of the most beautiful things with animals. And now she's going, because I want that to be a companion dog for her. Mm. And that's what I'm working on. Now she touches it. If you're not looking, she's like this. It's amazing. All the kids love it. Trishy probably loves it more than anyone else in the house. I was actually really shocked. Because she didn't like animals and she's terrified. Don't even take Chrissy to the zoo, it's a disastrous day. She's just she's terrified of birds and everything. Beaches that can't do this. And I think the reason all that happened is when I had them in the pram, I always had them covered. No one ever saw them joined. And there's only one pram in Australia, I forget, that didn't have that part in the middle. Yeah. So I had that shade cloth over. And so, you know, when you're sitting up and you see things, you can see things coming towards you, like branches or whatever. So she'd be lying there and suddenly a branch might hit in the face and I hadn't seen. And so yeah. she's so fearful and birds would come sweeping past. So it's all that stuff. She, the other one doesn't remember anything, but she remembers everything. Mm. So it's all that stuff. You know, when I was three years of age, I never sat up, I never had the fresh air behind them. I was on the park privately. So all that stuff you learn hitting the back to the front. Still, Chrissy's only little covering up with the front of the back. Things like that, she just, the simple things that you realise you learn when you're a baby. I'm starting to realise that she doesn't know anything like, oh, how does she know that stuff? But you never saw the table. She mm. never went out in public. I never let people see them like that. And so and the, one of the most beautiful things was just when there's no one about, they just put the cover off, they could see the sky. Wow. And they could see a car. If no yeah. one's looking, no, but those things, the three years they didn't have that. So still to this day, there's things like that that Patricia, who goes in grade two, doesn't get. Yeah. Doesn't know the back and the front. Doesn't know what that is. Up or down, she's still learning things like that. That you still depend on Patricia. Which is the front of the house? Um, that way? No, she yeah. doesn't understand it. And it's the things you just learn when you're sitting the kid. Like every now and again, I see Matthew, but he's only nine or eight months. I'm thinking he's on a table. God, he knows what fruit is. Yeah. Like, he knows that open and closes. Chrissy couldn't understand how it opens that way or this way. Yeah. It's just things like that. You don't yeah. realise how much they learn. Yeah. So that's been a real learning curve. But that's the basic things you see. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. Global gardens of peace. peace. Tell us the global gardens of peace. Well, well, what happened, um, I'm not really a garden person, I have no idea how to do yeah. this. <laughs> but one day, um, I was in Gaza Strip, I've been there quite a number of times, I've got a colleague of mine from Melbourne, his name is Philip, he's a, a Palestinian Australian, and we got stuck in Gaza this day because there was some border closure. And so we were there for a few days, and then the people said, Moira, we'll, we'll take you on a tour, and I said, well, I've seen most of Gaza, it's like 20 minutes each way. And they said, yes, we'll take you, we're going to take you to the graveyard. And I said to Philip, as a, a, a Victorian, a Australian, I said, seriously, Philip, as if I'd be taking people to the Glade Hill Cemetery when they come to Melbourne, I'm like, I'm worried, I'm sorry, I'm taking this. I said, Philip, I just think it's really funny. If I told people in Australia, I was going to a graveyard, seriously. And they go, no, everyone, please, just, and I said, I'm going to ask, I'm just telling you, it's a body, you know, it's just crazy. I said, no, it's a beautiful graveyard. Oh, yes, we have lots of beautiful graveyards in Melbourne, too, and we'll take you to see them in Melbourne, and lovely graveyards. <laughs> well, yes, we would like that. So I'm just being sarcastic, but I don't realise it, because I just think it's the irony of it. So yeah, so Phil is talking to Arabic, I'm just looking at the streets as we're going along and then the streets in Gaza, it's very dusty, and there are no plants, and there's no grass, and kids, the work of children, the work for children is play, you know, so kids will play anywhere, it doesn't matter if they've got the Lego, or they've got the dirt, or they've got the sand pit. so they're on the street, throwing rocks and whatever, you just look at these kids, you have a moment, they're all dirty, and they're happy, you know, funny, the war zone, kids are still happy, you know, I think, um, not that dads are happy, kids are happy, so I think parents put a good thing on their children, so, 
So we're driving along and you look at those kids, you're having a moment thinking, well, isn't life so unjust? We all have those moments on holidays, you know? Mm -hmm. There's no different to Gaza than you feel in Bali. So you're getting into this great big war and, and you get into the car and say, oh, you, are, you will like this very much. Oh, yes, I know, I'm really looking for, I've got my camera, I said. So I'm just trying to be sarcastic and suddenly I walked behind this door, this gate and I could not believe what I was seeing. It was some of those moments that you think, where on earth might it was the most beautiful place in the Gaza Strip? Mm -hmm. And I says, is this the graveyard you're talking about? Yes, yes. And even Philip was like, oh my, oh my. There were trees, there were flowers, there was beautiful colour flowers, there, were, there, was, there was grass this thick. Mm -hmm. I could not believe it, it went on forever. And mm -hmm. I said, well, what on earth is this? I said, this is a graveyard. It's, it's, it's for British, Australians, and New Zealand, and Jewish graves. Maddox had been there for 90 years looked after beautifully and I, I ended up spending a couple of hours there. I'm walking along looking at these girls like I don't even even like, this is beautiful. And I said, how could something like this be so beautiful in Gaza? So as I was quite overcome and I kept asking questions, what is this? Why is it like this? And it's, it's maintained by the Wars Trust in London who paid the money for this family to maintain it. Anyway, and so we get back in the car and I'm sort of, you know, gobsmacked and thinking, oh my God, I feel, I feel so bad, I can't believe this. And I'm walking, driving on the road and I think to myself, wow, Look at this, I said, all these kids in the street, when I pick them all up, and you want to take them all in the car and run them in the graveyard, I says, go and play, mm. go and have a play, you know? And I think any Australian, I'd like to think any human, would have walked away from a Western country thinking, isn't this amazing you can do this for the dead and not for the living? And if such a place can, can survive in such fertile ground, pure sand, or sand before anything can survive here, you know you can do it. I said, Philip, this is a disgrace. I said, you know, this is shocking. I said, why have the children got this one? Why are they getting destroyed? They get bombed, they get nothing. I said, well, why the graveyard? Why has no one done that? Yes, yes, you have a point, you have a point. So the next day, we were, before we were leaving, they had this luncheon for us, and the leader of the Palestinian Authority were there, and the leaders of the government, and the, the mayors, and all that. So I said, Philip, I want you to translate. Well, what will you say? Are you prepare me? I said, no, no, you just translate. And just remember, some people send English, so you have to translate exactly what I say. But I have a really good idea. Well, we appreciate the idea first. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I said, so I want to say thank you to the people on behalf of my country. We're so happy to be involved in bringing kids to Melbourne for surgeries. And, you know, our doctors do great jobs and we love one day to work with you and all this and the right stuff. And I said, but I want to tell you about, I'd like to say something else to you. I said, I'm wondering if your government here would like to give us some land and my people, my people, my country, will build you a garden. I had to ask my people. <laughs> no chance of growing. They said, oh, you want land? Yes, if you can give me land here on the Gaza Strip and put a block away from Australia, the Australian people are going to build you a garden like you've never... You think that graveyard's nice? You wait to see what, what garden we can build. And Philip's going, oh, well, well, this is not good. You know, this is very really good, Philip. Trust me, it's very good. You know, no, no, but there's lots of people who would do this. I know, I know they would. And they go, well, Miss Kelly, we're the most densely popular place on the face of the earth. I said, we don't have land for refugees. I said, yes, I know. But if you ever have land, Australia will answer the cause of the garden, I said. So, all the other clap, 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 all this, whatever. So, anyway, they probably got the dumb one. New Zealand speaks English in America, so they thought the dumb one from America. <laughs> he has no idea about political situation, there's no room on this place, and there's no land. So, anyway, during the time, the, the irony here, I was the twins, at the time of the twins, I was halfway through their surgeries, I get a call, they said, Well, there's someone from Palestine Authority here, and they're visiting, and, they, and they, they're going back, but they're not allowed to leave the country until they meet you. I said, God, what have I done, you know? So, so they said, oh, Moira, I said, Philip, I can't, I'm locked down, I can't have anyone in the twins, the girls got sick before. I said, Moira, please, please, we have to. And he went on and on, and he said, listen, all I said, my feet, you know, he just wasn't letting him up. So I said, okay, let's go for it. So I met him in the front room. So we had a little chat, and he sort of shakes hands, and you know, I wanted to meet you, Miss Kelly. I said, oh, yes, 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 I'll come back to Gaza one day, I'm just busy at the moment. And then I have this envelope to give you. I said, oh, oh, and who's that for? I said, that's for you. And I have been, my duty is to hand this and I'll give it to you now. That's great. So I put the envelope here and Phyllis is more open. I said, Philip, I'll open it up. Don't worry. I said, oh, you need to open it now. I said, sorry, I said, open it. I said, oh, what's this? And it's in our and I said, Moira, it's, um, it's called Moira's Garden. I said, oh, what's the Moira's Garden? Well, it looks like they've given you three acres. Who's given me three acres? But well, in Gaza, because I completely forgot about the garden. What are you talking about, Philip? Where you said that you were going to build a garden from the Australian people and now the government have given you land. Oh, Jesus, me and Joseph, really? <laughs> 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 Something, oh my God. I said, Moira, what are you going to do? I said, oh, Philip, this is, this is really bad timing. I'm seriously I'm twinkling around right there, as if I can do it again in Gaza, in Gaza, really. Well, Moira, what do you want to say? Because it's a big thing that we've got land in Gaza. I said, 
well, yeah, we've got that, not me. That's quite like the way they sound. We've got that in Gaza. I said, Philip, just tell them I'm a little conjure with Smith's long story, but this is very touchy. Thank you. I'll hold on to the, 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 the title. So once the girls are separated six months later, I pick this up and I'm like, oh, what do I do with this? This is such a responsibility. Maybe I'll just give them a John Hammer or something and sort this out. I don't know what to do. But then I thought, I'll just swing up and go through Google, as you mentioned before. Yeah. I just put in gardens, Victoria, and a thing called came up called Landscape Victoria. Oh, I'm happy to give them a bunch, you know, just just try and wing it in here, you know. So mm. I asked for the CEO, and they go, he's speaking, oh, it's Moira Kelly, I think, I'm speaking, because it's a very nice <laughs> voice. So I was regarding, uh, regarding construction of a, of, a, of a garden and playground. Oh, okay, one moment. So she goes, I said, oh, yes, can I help you? I said, yes, Julia. I said, now, Julia, you've come very highly recommended. Google. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, um, I just let you know that I've had this wonderful phone call uh, and I've been given some land and a chance to build something from Australia. A garden. It's in, it's in Gaza. I said, okay, so whereabouts is it? Gaza. I said, well, is that New South Wales? Because we're just Victoria. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's actually um, Gaza Strip. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, Middle East. And it's all quiet on the phone. And she goes, um, where are you? Do you realise we're landscape Victoria? Yes, and I know that, but you came highly recommended and you would know where I'd go with this. And she goes, well, we're, you know, um, we don't do gardens at Victoria, you know, we design them. I said, I know, I said, that's why people thought it'd be great to have a Victorian, the, the knowledge of Victoria in the Gaza, because it'd be better than anywhere else in Australia. I said, your name came up, you would know people. Well, not really, but can you leave it with me in a moment? I said, oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, oh, Philip, it's looking great, it's looking great, it looks like all these people are buying into it. So lo and behold, she rings back the day later, said, Moira, and she goes, now, I've spoken to someone now, and he's, he works at the town gardens, and he's out there. So I suppose she prefers that I must be out there too. So, yes, it's because he wants to meet with you. So to make a long story short, Andrew Layla, who is a, a designer at the World Town Gardens Children's Garden, and is on the ABC program on weekends, he's out there too. And he came on board, and then he brought someone else on board, and we got people in other areas of Victoria. So we've got uh, about t uh, 12 of us, isn't there? And we're set up Global Gardens because we're now registered, and I'm on a PowerPoint for you see us. We launched this in Parliament House last year. 14 designers from all the universities in Melbourne have designed this, this garden. It went from three acres to five acres. Then they gave us eight. I said, no more! No more. <laughs> <laughs> no more. So we've locked at eight acres, and actually we're going back out there with the design in, um, in, May. in May, on the early May. In a couple months. In May, yeah. In May, yeah. With the design, so the team out there, the team here, and now we'll be using the money. So we're trying to yeah. Julia Bishop, our friend up there, Tony, because I met Tony Abbott in an airport when he wasn't Prime Minister. And I got to, I saw him, I sat with my four kids coming from a wedding and he was in the corner and I said to Ahmed, who's a very sensible one, I said, Ahmed, get my life up there, there's Tony Abbott. Oh my God. And I said, don't tell him that because he doesn't want to get a photograph. And two different human beings in my house, one who's up there, one who's not, one who's conservative. I said, oh my God, Ahmed, this is I want you to go to the garden mum. This is really inappropriate. Kids have answered space. You know what it's like when people come to you all the time? I said, Mum, this is not the right time to wait. She went, I thought, make an appointment. You know, we won't make an appointment seriously, I mean, so I had to let it go. But I knew that he'd forgotten about it, then it's gone. So I, I said, Teacher, we brought my kids over there to the toilets, where he was right there at the door. So I deliberately said, Chrissy, toilet. No, no, I said, toilet, come on, off you go. And then I said, You mind who I'm in? And I came back and I grabbed Trishna. Oh, Mummy, I don't want to go. I said, You're going to the toilets. So by the time I came back, of course, who's talking to my boys? Tony Abbott. Because it's just after the Olympics, and I just swam so. And so I'm standing there thinking, thank you, God. And I'm standing there for a while, they're talking, and I'm going, oh, Mum, this is Tony. Oh, Helen, who are you? <laughs> and I'm going, oh, this is my mum, oh, I have a turn, I have a worry. I said, I have the girls, and we got talking, and blah, blah, blah. And one thing led to another, it was a bit of a lull. I said, now, Tony, I was just talking to Jeff Kennett last week, and I met him at the football, and I asked him about the garden. And he said, don't put any money, get off the government, all the partners. Are. And he, so I sort of named him. Jeff said, I should talk to you. I said, is that right? He said, I have this name. I said, what do you mean? And now he goes, excuse me, Mum. I said, excuse me, uh, Tony, but my husband, something's is really inappropriate right now, but no time like the present. Oh, no, Armin, it's fine. Thank you, Armin. I'll proceed. He just put him back in his place. He's like shocked that I'm embarrassing like that. So, yeah. he said, so I said to the guy, he goes, Well, you've got any guns? I said, yeah. How much? I said, well, oh, eight acres at the moment. It's really a bit too much, but eight acres. Oh, my God, and how much? He started asking for measurements and the price of work. 100, I said, we've got to need a thing. I think a million, but now it's 10 million. We're doing this in plan. Actually, we're And so then he goes, and he goes, um, oh, my mom, is this amazing? I said, and uh, how'd you get it? It's really yours. I said, yes, Tony, I'm really going to do it. I said, I want the money. I want this from the Australian people to the people of Ghana. I want this to be for the people. I said, any other country want this now? I said, Moira, absolutely. Kids, I was government people over it. And he says to me, I said, oh, there's a bell rang. I said, Moira, that garden's going to happen. I said, yes, Tony, I believe it is. I said, he said, Moira, that garden will happen. 
could feel, I said, yes, I was just shocked that this walked away and did, of course, he's become Prime Minister, so now we're in line with the government that they have. Yeah. Sure. So all I can say is, watch this space. So that's what he's doing. So I keep praying these days where he is because I just need my gun. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what he's doing. So yeah, so this this is a wonderful opportunity to have it. It's already going into the funding. And you've got the garden uh, global gardens of peace org is the website to uh, uh, so. just global gardens of peace. Global Google. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I've actually put something on the Facebook page as well just for more information mm -hmm. and to help or contribute what can people do to well, what, like well maybe just be friendly at the moment because they're, they're, they're going to do some fundraising but the moment we watch this space here and yeah. these people do we have we have functions don't we too just share it on share just go and do a lot of sharing yeah, yeah. great what do you do to switch off Moira? what does Moira do what is the, what, what what you? you're a mother so what do mothers do what do mothers do are you happy with the kids I'm very happy. It's enough. Yeah, it's enough. There you go. Yeah. Love it. And um, and I guess parting. Yeah. What, what would be the parting word? Saturday? Probably one of my parting words would be just because we're Australian, just don't think it's not your problem. Yeah. I said we live in this generation. Yeah. It's a funny world we live in when you know we can send satellites to space, and we can um, do incredible technology. But the same world we live in, it depends on what passport you own, what sort of privilege you have. So if there's things we can do to help other people, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to just, you know, just the problems in India are as much our problems as our theirs. Yes. So we don't feel that a passport obliges us to not to get involved in those sort of things. Yeah. And maybe all of us here know someone who's a carer. Well, all of us are going to be carers one day or we'll have to care for someone. So that person who thinks too busy or whatever, maybe just offer them a meal or just say something nice to them because I can't tell you the impact it has on someone who's a full-time carer. So we all know someone. Whether it's a partner, an old person, whether they're looking after a child or a neighbour, we all know a carer. So start off baby steps. Just one, no one needs to know you're doing it, but just sort that care out and make a difference. Just do mm. something. So important. You don't have to sponsor a child, you can sponsor a carer. Sponsor a carer. Mm. Thank you. Did anyone have any? I mean, we're all here. We've still got um, still got a little while. Thank you so much. No and you carried the torch. My God, I didn't I even know. go on there. It's amazing. I didn't even realize she carried the torch. I'm so sorry. It's the first time I've And you guys were together. Oh, yeah. She got business what class amazing. seats. Oh. And hotel was paid for everything. Oh, I didn't even pay for that. If it was amazing, it was fair. Oh, what business class seats? Oh, oh, the torch was great too, but I still talk about the business class seats. The the business class. <laughs> <laughs> I still talk about the business class seats. I tell a, a very funny story on that one. Because <laughs> we, we were at Samsung, flew us over. Yeah. And so it was all paid for. It. And then yeah. the, the thing was that they had a film crew and they were going to film it and it was going to go on TV. Yeah. It was yeah. going to launch. Yeah. It was a great ad for Samsung with Mora there. So they had the whole. So the crew went with us. Yeah. Filmed with us there. Spent like a few days with us and then. The event happened, and anyway, and, and they all said, "Now, Maura, remember, you know, this is how you go when you're running. You can't you know the camera stay in front of you, and blah blah blah." So I was over the camera crew, and boy, we, we kind of could separate. Maura go, the people that carry the torch go there, the others go there. The police the the camera crew, yeah, yeah. and then we saw Maura. Maura hops off the bus as she goes. Oi, oi, oi! I was so excited. <laughs> she starts like that, she gets the whole crowd going. I had everyone going the opposite way. Really? But then she got so enthused. I was so excited. She forgot about everyone, she forgot about the camera crew, oh, she forgot about all the expense of Samsung, and she was gone like a rocket. Oh, the was on fire. <laughs> and we had the oh. film crew running and running, running, and they said, Louise, Louise, you've got to stop her, slow her down, slow her down. And I was like to run next to her, but yeah. I couldn't keep up with her because she was. Blind. So I was there. So I got in between the chest these four guards yeah. around her. Uh, <laughs> stop. So the guards said, You don't know time, you're going in the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I said, But I need to slow down. And Moy got, Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Moy, you got to slow down. She didn't. So, oh, no, so, so they get to the end and they go, What the? We <laughs> missed the no film on her. <laughs> So then they get a few little bit of footage at the end and they flip the whole thing. And if you look up on YouTube, YouTube, I've got a photo. I've got a photo. Well, look at the clip you. on YouTube. Is that you can see why it's all the music has gone slow motion. They got me going. It actually was really good. They had to because they couldn't get the thing. But actually, there's a That's reason why it's in slow motion. Oh, and so there's nothing that you could see on live stream. But you could see me trying to get to her. <laughs> 
trying to stop her, and this guy's going, if you don't stop now, you're going to the police van, and that's it, you're out. Because I think she's going to torture her. Yeah, it was a, we had such a crack. It was just so fun. Amazing. You're Such amazing. amazing. You're both amazing. amazing. And can I just say, that was the same. Can I tell you about that? I yeah. went to the torch, and I used to say, I used to for two days in the evening when I came back, so I didn't like missing the girls. Yeah. Like, this first time was so hard to really yeah. miss us. Because they were really, they were still really little. Yeah, I just never left there. Yeah. So my sister Fran and Marilyn stayed there. Sister yes. Sister that we had this thing, the Skype thing, which was yes, amazing. Yes, yes, yes. It's had some organised, all yeah. that was amazing. Yeah. So then I did that, and then Ahmed swam in the Olympics for Australia. Yeah. Two, uh, six weeks later, and so then some people raised money for my son and I to go, because we wouldn't have gone, because we didn't have the money, for myself and Emmanuel to go to London. And so we saw Ahmed. So the same year that he made his first Olympics, I went to carry the torch for Australia. Yes. I know, it was really crazy. Amazing. And the torch came home. You could have learned to keep that one. Yeah. 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 I was trying yeah. to give it to the National Museum. Yeah. Because I just thought it should go somewhere. But they already had, they gave them some spare. And I thought, well, I have the real thing. I mean, I thought it was where it's probably given to the family. I said, well, I just like to straight for it. So I've still got it. Yeah. Well, I just feel anyway, but that was funny. But then I made a menu and said, well, sell it. I said, the coach was shocked. He doesn't sell it. Yeah. It's eBay. <laughs> eBay. <laughs> sell it. Sell it. Yeah, yeah. You get a pair of shoes with it. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. What compares to that? So it's just the yeah. mindset's very good. Yeah. 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 Sell it. Anyway, so there you go. Well, you've got an option and offer. Global Garden. 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 Global some fundraising to go for certain things as well. Right. And we now realise we want to do gardens in other places in the world, so we've made it global. So we want to realise countries have, have um, had um, natural disasters or war, because I had a petty drop of me in, I did in Bosnia for four and a half years during the war. So there was moments there that I just thought that kids, what we don't have is, there's no, most gardens become graveyards. And even during war, there's still booby traps and landmines, but during war, people build hospitals, roads, and schools, but still there's nowhere for kids to go. So they go into buildings to play. So the irony is no one's ever thought of making that one of the priorities to make some safe areas for children to play and families to get dressed up and walk their Wonderful. kids. You know? So yeah. yeah, so that's I'd like to, I'd like to think it's this Victorian Australian thing that we start off thinking, God, I'd like to be like a war vision one day. Like you have Doctor Without Borders, Garden Without Borders. Mm -hmm. Someone never called this kind of garden of peace. Yeah. yeah. So I'll have grow up. I'd like to know more about that. Oh great. Yeah. That'd be great. That. Thanks. Right. And uh, particularly with you know, if you can identify particular parts of gardens okay. and, and that in communities could have their sense of yeah. having a, having coming together in order to provide right. that yeah. kind of Oh brilliant. Louise is a board member as well. Yeah, great. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's good. That'd be great. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, mm. each of you, for coming this morning. We're connected. Mm. We're friends. Yes. We're yes. friends. Um, this conversation, like uh, with Joe and with all of us, will continue. We will watch and help you grow uh, this this amazing initiative. And um, yes, just anywhere we can. And uh, watch this space. I like that. Yeah. Watch this space. So what, 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 what's to come? Congratulations. God bless you. And thank you for doing this. Cause it'd be great. No, to that's talk it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you don't always need a big crash for things, and I think that having something intimate like this is actually really, really good. It's so really, I really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, that's great. Oh, so yeah. good. And you've done it, you're awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Back at you. You know, thank, thank you. you. Okay, well, we've still got a lot of